Hello, everyone. Susan Gerbic here from Psychics Explained. So I woke up this morning and saw my Skeptical Inquirer article had published. And the way I knew it was because a friend of mine <laughs> sent me a message saying, what? You're picking on this guy from Seinfeld, Jason Alexander now, Susan? <laughs> I'm like, I guess my article published. So yes, I'm not going to say picking on him, but I guess a little bit I am picking on him. Okay, now I understand this is not a popular thing to be picking on people who are famous and to, you know, mince apart their words and so on. But, you know, bear with me, okay? If 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 a celebrity is telling a story about a psychic as if it is real and that there's no other explanation for it, or at least he has no explanation for it, when he's probably told this story hundreds of times, it's over 30 years old, the story he's telling, then I, I'm just going to call it out for what it is. You are endorsing psychics. You may not be endorsing a specific psychic, but you are endorsing the idea that psychics are real. Even in an interview, even in an interview with Bob Nygar, private investigator, busted many psychics, and actually has recovered millions of dollars and sent some psychics to jail. Okay. He's giving an interview with this Bob Nygar person, totally agrees with Bob Nygar that psychics are harmful and that psychics can be frauds and on and on and on. But no, Jason Alexander has to tell his story. He wants to tell his story. This is his go-to story about psychics and then he can't explain it. And then he tells us the story and you're like, dude, that is so explainable. <laughs> what, what are you thinking? You know? And, and so, as I like to say, you know, I don't want to get invited to parties and things because I'm one of those, well, actually folks, that isn't, um, you know, just kind of like a, you know, pours water on everything. But I want to say, and I'm going to put the link to the video as the um, as well as the article I wrote for Skeptical Inquire in the description if you guys want to read what um, I wrote or watch the interview with Jason Alexander and um, Bob Nygar. If you want to, you know, check them out. I hope you do. I want to say that if Jason Alexander had said something really Okay, over the top, like something that most people would find harmful, like saying that ivermectin, ivermectin is what he took to um, keep himself from getting um, COVID. And if he said, or if he said something about vaccinations, that my son got it, got vaccinated and then he got sick, and I think that the vaccines are the problem. Or if he said something you know, even more harmful, well, even more, that's pretty damn harmful, but you know, like, um, I got cancer from, from some, you know, from cho eating chocolate or something. I mean, we'd call them out on that because it's dangerous, it's harmful. And when you're a celebrity, you have, you know, a little more sway with the audience than an actual person like myself would have, you know, who's listening to me, except maybe, you know, 10 people. I don't know. Okay. There's more than 10 people and I totally respect you guys and you leave me wonderful comments and I hope you continue leaving me wonderful comments and like and share and, and so on. Let, let me know where I went wrong. I've already had a couple of people point out in the article I wrote for Skeptical Inquirer that um, Jason Alexander is not a comedian. He plays a comedian on TV and on Seinfeld and he's probably not a real mentalist, which is a form of magic that I know really well because, you know, Mark Edward, my partner, um, was a mentalist for a long period of time. And I've spent a lot of time in the mentalist world. But Jason Alexander is a magician, which he sometimes does mentalism kinds of things, but he hasn't really been in the world of mentalism, which is kind of where you're trying to pretend you're psychic. And that's a different kind of field of, of magic like escapology is a field of magic it's where you're escaping from things all right so let's get to this interview and um i'll you know as usual i can pretend i'm going to spend two minutes on this and it's going to take longer so they do this really wonderful video interview 
for a podcast that they have. It's called Really No Really Podcast, and it's also a video. And they it is Jason Alexander, who's the guy from Seinfeld, and Peter Tilden. And Peter Tilden plays a little more skeptical in this um, interview. And they interview Bob Nygar. Bob Nygar does a terrific job, as he always does. And that's a, you know, check him out. Check out his work. It's a different field of the psychic investigations that I, I don't do. I don't get involved in the world that um, of law, um, that kind of thing. He's dealing with something a little bit different. Well, actually, it's a lot different than the psychic world I deal with. All right. So in the interview, Jason Alexander says this statement and it is exactly correct. And I'm going to read it to you and you can listen to it on the podcast if you want. He says, there are a lot of psychics on television with their own shows being interviewed, being treated with legit legitimacy. Absolutely. Doesn't this mean they're setting the scene for all these con artists because you got these people being given enormous credibility enormous remuneration i can't say the word sorry when you see people like a john edward or tyler henry or Teresa caputo and they're being treated as legitimate people with an ability they are compounding the problem for people that you have to deal with meaning bob nygar has to deal with and jason's exactly right there when somebody endorses a psychic like on morning TV or, um, you know, a New York Times article or a celebrity endorses a psychic or some sciencey kind of person endorses a psychic. Every time they do that, it's setting up people going, oh, well, maybe some psychics are real because according to this person or that scientist or this article that's in the New York Times, they say this person is psychic or it seems like the person's psychic because there's no other way of explaining it. So Jason's exactly right. That is, that's a thousand percent. And that's what I fight against all the time. You know, I put out a video, I write an article, I do an investigation, I do a sting. And then somebody comes back at me and says, well, CBS would have vetted that show. And so of course, if CBS has it on, then the guy must be real because CBS would never do that or the morning news show that i watch had such and such psychic on here and they didn't they didn't say anything about them not being real so obviously the person must be real because why would the news you know a news station have a psychic on and <laughs> it gives legitimacy to them and i fight this this is it's it's an ongoing battle and I think that a lot of people like Jason Alexander don't realize what they're doing. Um, I think that a lot of the morning TV shows and the New York Times and so on, they either want to give a false balance, like they want to try to say, well, you know, nobody really takes this seriously, or there's no harm in psychics, or nobody, you know, it's okay, let's let, let it go ahead and um, we'll just put them on, people can make their own mind but they don't get the harm. They don't get that at all. And that's what this channel psychics explains does is we really get into what is going on in the readings that are happening, especially in things that are not the, you know, the public things that have been edited, you know, the Thomas Johns, the, the Tyler Henry's, the Teresa Caputo's, those are, that's a kind of a different world. I'm more interested these days in the small readings the readings that are being done with 10 or 15 people or or one person who's not had uh doesn't have a recording at all and just remembers it a certain way like Jace, jason alexander does okay so i'm going to read this to you <clears throat> you can listen to it on the podcast or the video if you'd like to so bob nygar has left and Jason Alexander had said he really wants to talk about his his own psychic story. And so after Bob Nygar has left the interview, they continue filming and Jason Alexander gets to give his, um, his story that sounds like it's been told many, many times. All right. So I'm quoting him. Years ago, prior to Seinfeld, I was not a known entity. There was no Wikipedia to look anybody up. My wife and I had an unexplainable infertility and we had done the in vitro route, but we had not been successful. 
but we'd moved to California and we were meeting a whole new set of doctors. My mother-in-law goes, you know, there's a psychic in New York I used to go to. Why don't you see him? It's like 200 bucks. So it's not that big of a deal. Just go see him. He's pretty famous. His name is Frank Andrews. He since passed away. And we go to brown this brownstone in Greenrich, Greenrich, Greenrich Village. And he's this tiny guy that kind of sounds like Truman Capote. So there's a little bit more I cut out because he describes what uh, this guy looks like. And it wasn't relevant to the article. It just makes it sound like this is how Jason Alexander tells stories. You know, he gives he's he's a storyteller. So. It embellishes it so that the listener to a story can get a feeling of what the person looked like. It's really not important. We're Phyllis's daughter and son-in-law, and that's all he knows about anything. And he goes in and we sit down and he goes, he goes, meaning the psychic. It's like somebody is yelling into my head. So I'm just going to tell you what I'm hearing and don't know what that means. And if it means anything to you, great. You've been trying to get a project going and it's not been successful and you've just met some people that you're considering bringing on the project and you're not sure. There's a guy whose name is either Peter or Paul. I get him confused and it could be a last name like Peterson. If you do the project with that person, it will be successful. Okay, so we'll stop right there. Right? So Jason Alexander this must have happened at least over 30 years ago in the 80s, mid 80s. According to Wikipedia, Jason Alexander started working in on the stage and trying to, you know, as an actor and singer and actually a magician in the 80s. And he got married in 82. And this must have happened within like 85, 86, 87. So he's not done Seinfeld and there is no Wikipedia. But what do you think that project might be? Okay, so if the psychic knows, because he knows Phyllis, the mother-in-law, and maybe Phyllis, the mother-in-law, has been telling people, oh, my son-in-law, you know, he's an actor, you know, whatever she says about him, that he's been doing some stage and he's done singing and he's having, you know, some success or she thinks he's super talented, that he's he's probably going to you know, farther, or maybe she's saying, you know, my son-in-law, the loser, you know, he can't feed my daughter. <laughs> I don't know what she's saying, but the story gets around that her son-in-law is in theater, acting, singing, stage work. And the psychic and the Phyllis know each other because Phyllis has had readings from him. And Jason says, the only thing the psychic knows about me is that this is the daughter of Phyllis and I'm the son-in-law of Phyllis. Okay. So what would you think that project would be? Right. So that's not where it's going. Cause I know what you're thinking. Yes, I do know what you're thinking. And I'm not psychic. You're thinking of a project, like something that's done on stage or, you know, an acting career or maybe Seinfeld that if you sign on with this project, Seinfeld, you will go far. You know, if you sign on with this with this person, you will go far. Somebody named Paul, somebody named Peter, or somebody named Peterson. And I get it all confused in my brain, he says. Okay. So let's go back to what Jason says. Um, well, the guy we had kind of gone with, I guess, in California of the doctors, um, was Dr. Richard Paulson. P-A-U-L-S-O-N. I mean, he picked that name out of the ether and Paulson created my two children. This guy, the psychic, knew nothing about us. That's where we went to and how he described it. And I can't explain it. There's a thousand guys named Peter and Paul. It could be anything, but it was just one of those things. All right. So that's the project. Apparently, according to Jason Alexander, is the project was creating a, a child. Not a TV show, not an acting career, not a music gig, not a show somewhere. Have you ever heard of anybody saying, my wife and I are engaged in a project when they're trying to get pregnant? I mean, nobody says that, right? Okay, not even in the 80s. So, <laughs> so the co-host, Peter uh, Tilden, he responds to to this story that Jason Alexander sang 
God bless. I'm thrilled that you believe it. I'm thrilled that you have two lovely kids. I think it's mostly completely BS. Now, that isn't to say some people don't have empathy for others. And if you get quiet and really listen to people, you can pick up stuff if you're sensitive. And that's right. You know, people are sensitive and they do, and they do listen and they have a lot of experience. Psychics have thousands of readings under their belt. So they, they do get this. They, they know what to say. You got a young couple and in front of you and it's phyllis's son-in-law and maybe he knows phyllis son-in-law is involved in theater and he mentions a project now we only know this this is all jason says so now i know that the reading wasn't that long and that was it the reading must have been longer than that but jason never tells us the rest of it why he's forgotten or it's not relevant to the story. It's most likely it's not relevant to what Jason wants to say, that there's no way that you could know this kind of stuff. I don't understand it myself. It must be real. So, you know, I'm going through this and, and it bugs me a lot, not only because Jason Alexander is a celebrity who clearly understands the psychics are harmful and that if you endorse them, if other people endorse them, who have credibility themselves being the news or a psychic, I mean, a celebrity or whatever, it sets, it makes it harder for people like myself and the people like Bob Nargar and people who do the kind of work that we do, where we're trying to explain what's actually going on. It makes it a lot more difficult because then people start thinking, Oh, maybe there's something into this, you know, Jason Alexander, you know, he's, he was on Seinfeld somehow or other that makes him an expert on knowing psychic stuff. No, of course not. He's just a guy, right? So let's just assume that Jason Alexander is exactly hundred percent right. He's as far as his memory goes, he's not forgetting something. Um, maybe the psychic experiment was, you know, the reading he had was just that long. And then they left, they said, okay, let's leave. <laughs> and we're forgetting all the misses that actually happened. And only those three names, Peterson, Paul, and Peter were mentioned. Let's just say that that's it, because all we got is, you know, Jason Alexander's story on this really, no, really podcast. So Jason first starts out as if he was hot red or he could not have been hot red. Now, hot reading to those of you who watch this channel know that means that the psychic knows something about you before they come in. And in I show a lot of that being, you know, you look them up on Facebook, you can look them up, well, in his case, on Wikipedia. There's a lot of things you can do to where, where you actually find out this information about somebody ahead of time. That is hot reading. But you guys all know, because I talk about this often, that hot reading isn't just looking them up on the internet. Sometimes hot reading is knowing something about a person beforehand because your sister told the psychic or they overheard something in like you're in the waiting room area and you say to your partner, gosh, I wonder if he really will know how, um, you know, our son is doing, you know, in heaven or maybe he overhears something or a, um, somebody who's working with a psychic over here or something, you know, they're in the restaurant together or they're at a, you know, who knows? Hot reading could be just that simple, just a chance encounter with somebody where maybe you, the psychic recognizes you from um, high school, you know, elementary school, or you used to date somebody you they knew and you were pointed out to them. You know, the psychic may have a really good memory. And then when they're seated in front of you, it suddenly dawns on them, oh, that's the guy whose son did, you know, and, and then it comes out into the reading. That's all hot reading. And you can't know. It's There's no way of controlling for it because there's just no way of knowing what could have come into the situation and, and um, polluted it, which is what he said. Phyllis has come to the psychic before. Phyllis is his mother-in-law. And of course, his mother-in-law probably said something about him being in acting. So that's hot reading. But Jason Alexander doesn't get that. He thinks hot reading is only somebody who looks you up on Wikipedia or Facebook or something like that. No, no, Jason, you were probably hot read. You just don't know. You just didn't get that far. Now, it bugs me because he's a, he's done magic. He's, he's a 
magician. Jason Alexander is a magician. He should know better. Come on now. Anyway, so so he sets it up that way first that there's, you know, there's no way they could have looked me up on Wikipedia. Like that would have been relevant to the story anyway. Like Wikipedia would have had the name of his doctor, his fertility doctor. And if he had, if he would have gotten a little more right than Paulson, no, Peterson, when the name is Paulson, and why would he even mention somebody who's like, it just, it's just, no, of course not. He didn't look it up on Wikipedia or anywhere. It's just silly because he would have been more accurate. All right, so let's talk about the names. All right, so you've got the name Peter, Paul, or Peterson. That's the only names that Jason Alexander uses for when he tells the story. So how likely is it that Jason Alexander and his wife, so there's two people, 100%, you know, 100%, that's a lot of people, a lot of people they know, would have known a Peter, a Paul, or a Peterson that they could potentially be associated with, with some kind of project. You know, think about it. Think about the world around you. Do you know a lot of Peters, Pauls, or, or Petersons that could possibly be affiliated with you in some way? Well, okay. Let's look at the numbers, right? So now I didn't have any way of looking up, at least not quickly, the how common the name Peterson is in the United States, because this happened in New York in the 80s. But Peterson now is the 63rd most common last name in the United States. 63rd. That's a lot. So it's likely that somebody knows somebody named Peterson with the last name. I don't know what it would have been in the 80s, but it's probably a lot. Now the name Peter. So I went to the social security baby name database, which I love. Psychics must love it too as well, because you can tell generationally, you can put in the decade and you can see how popular a name, a first name is in the United States. And I think they start this in 1990, no, 1900, I'm sorry, 1900 and goes up to 2024 when I'm recording this. So according to the Social Security Baby Name Database, the name Peter has been in the top 60 male names from 1900 to 1996. So in the top 60 names of a new baby that's a male, Peter is going to be in there. So the name Paul was in the top 20 names from 1900 to 1968. Top 20. That's a lot. And then it slowly decreased in popularity. But by 1985, which was about whenever they went to go see the psychic, um, it was it had decreased, but it was still in the top 42. So in other words, it's very popular. The name Paul is extremely popular. Now, I know we're not talking about babies here. We're talking about people in general, somebody who could have worked on a project. And that's why I included like a large range of years, because in 1980, somebody that he's seeing the psychic in 1985, approximately when he's seeing the psychic, he the person who could be working on a project with him could have been, you know, 50 years old, 60 years old, 30 years old. We don't know. So if somebody was born in 1920, in 85, they'd be 65. So maybe that would be the person he would be working with. Now, how common was the name Paul in 1920 when the child was born? And we know it's in the top 20s. You know, you're of list of 20 names, every 20th child is going to be named Paul. It's a male. So that, in other words, the odds are extremely high, extremely high that there would be a Paul somewhere in there that they would be running across that either of them or them together working on a project would be successful right so that's the facts of, of the story so that's why the psychic would throw something out like that and the psychic doesn't say what it is specifically this project is you would think if the psychic was talking about you're going to create a baby with this person this well not with this person but the doctor is going to create a baby for you is going to help you with your infertility then the doctor would i mean the psychic would say i see you guys having a, a child i see a baby in your arms and 
um, somebody whose name is Peter or Paul or Peterson is going to be helping you along with that procedure. Okay, that'd be a lot more legitimate than just if you guys are trying to do a project <laughs> and it'll be successful if you sign on with this Peter Paul Peterson person. No, that's just silly. It just doesn't make sense at all, right? I mean, come on, really? Think about that. But what could it be a project if it had been like, it's okay, I write in this Skeptical Inquirer article, I says it could be a contractor, a teacher, a sales associate, a pilot, or most anything that they wanted to make fit this story, right? That's Jason and his wife. They are the ones who are deciding, aha, it could be a doctor because I've heard the name Paulson. And so, or it could be another group of people like maybe um, actors, musicians, dancers, set designers, choreographers, sound engineers, people who handle the revenue, people who handle money. It really could be pretty much anyone who would be helping them on this project that would be successful. So we, we don't know. And yes, successful could mean for Jason's career, you know, he would... If they signed on with this director, whose name is Paul or Peter, then they'd be successful. Yeah, that affects Jason Alexander and maybe not his wife. But of course it affects his wife because they're married. So what affects Jason Alexander affects his wife as far as their career, his career, where they move to, income, that kind of thing. So of course this project, if it's successful, it, even if it was just narrowly defined as being Jason Alexander's project is going to affect his wife. I mean, because, you know, we could reach that far, right? So, uh, you know, I go on and talk about a lot of different things about, you know, maybe he shouldn't have had, uh, if, if, you, if you decide that you wanted to believe what the psychic is saying, or you make it fit what the psychic is saying, it can be harmful to you because you... You may be letting go of opportunities that might be better opportunities for you. And you're deciding these things because the psychic said. And so you might want to say, let's go with that doctor and not these other doctors because the psychic said so. And let's just ride with that, you know. OK, so, I mean, we don't know. We'll, we're not living in a universe where there's parallel parallel. Um, you know, decisions, as we make decisions, the old decisions are being acted out somewhere in a different universe. No, no, we only know what happened. And Jason Alexander is attributing the psychics reading with him, with this, with this doctor. And then thus he had a successful outcome with two sons that are in their thirties. So, some of the things I wanted to also point out is that, so I'm reading the, the video, reading the video. I'm looking at the comments on the video of exposing psychic scams. Really? No, really. Again, look in the description. You'll be able to see this. He's got 35,000, almost 36,000 subscribers. This video was released in, um, let's see. Oh, July 23rd, 2024, and I'm recording this September 3rd, 2024, and it has almost 4,000 views. So in the comments, and there's only 37 comments, and I'm one of them. So some of the comments are, let's see, um, from a woman named Sarah Ashley Astrology. She says, you guys should do an episode on internet psychics and tarot readers too. It's a completely different business. Some, like me, are very ethical and in more in alignment with Jason's experience. There are others that scam and manipulate through the fear of doomsday predictions. Well, yeah, of course. So, but so she's more in more in line with Jason's experience, which is she's saying is real. Let's see. Another one I saw was, <laughs> I think that some people have a gift, but unfortunately, most psychics accept 
Electra are despicable lying fakes. Jason's experience is pretty cool, though. In other words, this person, whose name is Mrs. Bungle 75, 78, is saying that Jason's experience is real, but lots of psychics um, are despicable lying fakes, but some people do have a gift. In other words, Jason is helping encourage this, this belief that some psychics are real. Um, I think I saw some more. Let me see. Oh gosh, let me see. Um, I thought I found some more in here, but there, but there were more where people were saying um, that Jason had a real experience, that kind of feel to it. So that was my point. Is that when somebody like a celebrity, um, who has no business endorsing psychics, tells a story seriously? You know, not like a, like a joke or, you know, but like, hey, this is serious. I can't explain this. And then they just shut it off. They didn't even have Bob Nygar there to say, well, here's probably what happened. You know, this kind of thing. Right. So on, uh, on my Facebook page, um, um, into when I shared this, a couple of people had mentioned some things like one woman had written, she says, could the psychic have known the name of the doctor because of he knew Phyllis? And I said, it doesn't matter. He didn't come up with the name of the psychic um, of the doctor. He came up with the name Peterson and the psych and the doctor's name was Paulson. So the name son on the end of a, of, of a, a, as a last name is Pretty damn common, right? So the psychic didn't get it right. It was the psychic just throwing stuff out there. It didn't. No, I don't think so. Again, like I say, who says I'm gonna you're engaging in a project and what they're meaning is they're trying to get pregnant. <laughs> so um, you know, I hope you find this interesting. It's just one more data point in the data of gosh Susan really is annoying <laughs> why does she think she knows everything and don't invite her to a party because she's just going to be a real downer okay it's just more evidence I get it I get it okay okay I'm really annoying nobody's going to put me on their podcast and ask me these kinds of things where I get into the weeds and I start talking about what is probably actually going on but I'm standing by it so if Jason Alexander wants to rip me get in line <laughs> i've got a long line of haters all right my point is if you're going to go on to if you're going to do a podcast interview saying psychics are harmful and you can be fooled and you're a magician yourself and you know how easy it is to fool people and you probably fully understand how easy it is for the time over time the story the story just gets weaker and weaker and weaker because you're not memor you don't remember it right and and where's the rest of the story and so on you should watch your mouth because you are influential right you are a celebrity i mean you were this big star in seinfeld so you know, give people like myself and Bob Nygar a break. We really could have your, we could use your backing and not you endorsing psychics, even if you don't realize how how you're doing this, that, oh, I couldn't explain it. So this guy, you know, he, he created my children for me. It's like, so? <laughs> and his name was Paulson. So what, you know? people looking for signs and it's humans that's how we do things we try to find a way of fitting things make make sense of things that feel like they're not there isn't a lot of sense in it it's randomness and we're trying to make patterns anyway thank you all please like and share and as usual leave me comments because i always read all my comments thank you guys